So hello <coughs> and welcome to lesson one. Now study of real functions one. Okay, so in this video we'll be talking about open sets, <coughs> closed sets and the borrow sets. So don't forget to like the video if it helps you. And I hope you enjoy this video. So let's start with open sets. Okay, how do we define what an open set is? So a set S of real numbers is called open, provided for each x in S there is um, a certain arrow greater than zero for which this interval is contained in s okay <coughs> so we are going to illustrate that very soon okay so for example the interval a b is open so that means any interval of this form is open so let us take this interval for instance 0 1 since it is open, then that means we have to be able to use it to illustrate what the definition says, okay? So, now, this happens to be our set S, okay? So that's our set S. So with this set S, you know, it contains all numbers between 0 and 1 with 0 and 1 exclusive but all numbers between 0 and 1 so that means we can take any x which belongs to this set s so we can take any number let's take something like 0 0.9 then we take a certain r which is greater than 0 so r is a positive number but it is very very small no, very very small so R can be something like 0 0.01 okay so um we have this our interval here to be the s okay so when we take our x here which is 0 0.9 so If we add, so we are saying this interval x minus r, then x plus r should also be in s. So when we add and when we subtract the 0 0.01 and when we add it, we are going to get 0 0.89 and 0 0.91. We are saying this interval should be in s. So let's see. So when you add the 0 0.01 you get 0 0.91 which is somewhere here I think let me use a red ink somewhere here and when you subtract you get something which is somewhere here okay so you can see that this interval here is contained in this big interval right so that means that yes the solution um, the definition is true and you've illustrated it with this example okay so Let's take some propositions and explanations on open sets. So we are saying this set here is open and it's an open bounded interval. And each bounded interval of this form is of this form, okay? So um, does that mean something of this form is open? So this is not open, do you know why? because this particular interval here is unbounded. So when you go to the lower side, it is bounded by negative two, that's the left side. But the right side, the upper side, it is bounded by infinity. And this infinity is not a number, okay? So it makes this particular interval unbounded. So that means it's not an open set. But something like one, two, it's an open set because it is bounded both at the left side and at the right side by one and two respectively okay so for instance it's an example of an open set this is open 
this is open okay then the second one says s is said to be open if every point of s is an interior point of s so when you have this interval a equals zero one if you are to sketch it you're going to get this okay so you can see that every point here is inside the interval zero one so all these points here <coughs> all these points here we call them interior points of a and you can see that a is this and the interior points of a are also zero one so you can see every point of x is an interior point right The third one says, a set is open if it does not contain any of its boundary. So for instance, when you take the same interval, 0, 1, if you should sketch it, you know, the element in A will, will be here. And the boundaries are 0 and 1. And this 0 and 1, none of them is contained in A. So that means, yes, a set is open if it does not contain any of its boundary points. So, now let's go to what a closed set is. So, a set S is said to be closed if it contains all its limit points, okay? And I hope from your study of raw analysis, you remember what a limit point is, okay? So... When you take the delta delta neighborhood and of the points in the set, you should always get something which is within that set. Okay, so when you take um, this open set zero one, okay. So if you should sketch it, let's say I find for the limit point, you realize that. Of course, we know that for all the elements or the numbers within 0 and 1, if you add something to it or subtract something to it, no matter how small, you always get something which will fall within the interval. But let's take one, 0 for instance. So 0, if you, add, if you should add something very small to 0, you always get something here. And you, if you to add, take something away, you get something here. But you can see this part falls within the interval. So that means 0 is a limit point of A. Here to when you ask, you add something to 1, you get something here. When you take something from 1, you get something here. So since we have something here, it makes 1 also a limit point. So that means the limit point of A is the closed set 0, 1. But you can see that because A is open, it does not contain all its limit, limit points. Sorry. If it's a is equal to zero one, the limit point of a will be zero one, and you can see this a here contains all its limit points. So that's why we say a set S is said to be closed if it contains all its limit points. Okay. So the second one says this is a closed bounded interval, and each bounded interval is of this form. Okay, in each closed bounded interval is of this form. So for instance, when we have something like 1, 2, this is a closed set. And this is a closed set, a closed interval. All right. So let's do some quick revision to revise ourselves of certain things we've learned. So it says consider this interval. Is it open? So you can answer this question in your head. Is it open? So yes, um, the correct thing is that it is open. And this is because if you should represent it and if you take a certain x which belongs to A, if you take a certain r greater than zero, this interval will be contained in A, okay? So it is open. And so we should find the limit points of A. So the limit points of A will be this. 
you can explain that with the previous example. When you find the closure of A, that means the closed set of A. So that's also this. And so we should find the interior points of A. So the interior points of A are all the numbers between 0 and 1. So that one too will be 0 and 1. And so if you find the exterior points of A. So if you should sketch this 0, 1. Okay. Everything here. The interior points. This is the boundary. This is the boundary. So everything to the right side here are exterior points and everything else here is exterior points. So that means the exterior points of A will be negative infinity to zero union one to infinity. And you say we should find the boundary of A. So that is simply zero one. Okay. So now let's move on to what a, a borrow set is. So borrow sets are a set that can be constructed from open or closed sets by repeatedly taking countable unions and intersections. So when you have open sets or closed sets and you repeatedly take countable unions and intersections, then you are forming borrow sets. Okay. So there is a proposition which makes it very simple to identify examples of borrow sets. And that is every interval of this form is a borel set. Okay, so we can give examples of borel sets, and we have this, this, and that because you could see they are of this form. Okay, <coughs> so that's it for this video. So the next video is going to be on um, countable sets and the Lebe outer measure. Okay. So see you in the second lesson.